Okay, now let's get a little bit more personal. I know this is gonna turn a lot of people off, but I figured I'd bring it up uh, now, just in case it comes up in another video. I'm going to just briefly state my politics and my religious beliefs. Okay, here we go. You ready? I am a center-right libertarian, and I don't really consider myself that religious. Not necessarily atheist or agnostic, just not very religious. There, that's all I wanted to say. You get? It's never too early to learn that the government is a greedy piglet that suckles on a taxpayer's teat until they have sore, chapped nipples. Now, while I can't say I'm not confident in my viewpoints, it's just not what I came here to do. But they might come up in another video, so I figured I might as well have you all prepared. I regret nothing. The end. Look everyone, it's the worst song of the week. It's actually so bad, it might be the worst song of the month. And depending on how the rest of the year plays out, it could potentially be the worst song of the year. Guys, these jokes wouldn't even make it into a fucking Madagascar sequel. Like These are jokes you'd hear from your classmate in third grade who had family issues. He doesn't even set up his it's one joke. Randomly no, because throwing it instead of just jumping like right into the animated part of the video, he's like, no, I need to have an yeah, argument a with a bunch of 12 jerk off fest. That's because that is my target. Stupid and I don't know what I expected and from the song, honestly, but as soon as the book opened in the video, I felt a feeling like you were stuck to There wasn't even an attempt to comedy there. She is a kangaroo. This is a celebrity charity thing. And? That's why it sucks. It doesn't really bring anything substantive to the case. So, yeah, it's just garbage. Uh, hi, I'm a fucking hanger. Uh, hang up your clothes and don't do anything else. Someone pay me money to say this dumb shit. Okay, firstly, what exactly can I say about this song that someone else hasn't already? Well, not much. Pretty much everybody here has talked about it. This video was a tough one to write for a lot of reasons. In the end, this song has just infuriated me so much, and I've taken my time to figure out exactly why I despise it. So if I seem to overuse reaction clips, keep in mind, it's to help me pull through this more smoothly. Also, I want to make something clear. My politics are not the reason why I hate this song. I'm judging this as an art piece, first and foremost. With that said, let's get into it. So, I just want to mention this quickly, but the person I'm going to be talking about is sometimes referred to as the Adam Sandler of music. I disagree. I disagree. Yeah, you see, at least Adam Sandler can make good music. <laughs> This guy is more, well, you know how one of Amy Schumer's main routines is to joke about her vagina? Yeah, Lil Dicky is her male counterpart. It's amazing, got my dick like, like a raisin. For those lucky enough to have never heard of him, I'll fill you in quickly. David Bird, otherwise known as Lil Dicky, loves to joke about his small penis. Not only does his name imply this, but you can see him in photos making this hand gesture to signify that his dick is small. He does this a lot. And I mean, a lot, a lot. Is this funny to you? No? Well, too bad, because he will not let this joke die. Laugh! Well, anyways, this guy makes music too, so we should probably talk about that. He managed to gain mainstream success back in 2018 with Freaky Friday, a song about him switching bodies with Chris Brown. I woke up in Chris Brown's body. Yeah, another thing he's known for are the celebrity appearances he has in his work. Not just in quantity, but it's who he manages to get. As stated previously, Freaky Friday had Chris Brown, but also Ed Sheeran, DJ Khaled, and strangely enough, Kendall Jenner. I got a vagina! Hell, his first album alone had artists like Fetty Wap, Brendan Urie, and Snoop Dogg. How he pulled this off is beyond me. Maybe he secretly bribed them, or he dug up some old tweets. Either way, I'm baffled. Well, okay, I think I know the reason. Perhaps it's because he originally started in advertising. It's actually a big part of this story that he's built around himself in his music. 
He began as a guy who hated his office job and then quit it to develop a music career. It's safe to say that because he knows his stuff in marketing, he was able to get a hold of all these people. And I'm guessing at some point he realized how good he was at doing this and thought to himself, I should write a song that features a bunch of celebrities. Again, but what could I do to bring them all together? Perhaps a charity song. There comes a time when we heed a certain call. Yeah, celebrities love being a part of these. And why wouldn't they? They get to do press tours as well as promote themselves, all while feeling good they did something worthwhile. But what should all of these celebrities fight for exactly? Well, I don't mean to alarm you, but the world is in trouble. Earthquakes, volcanoes, overpopulation, famine, a widespread disease. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! A man has fallen into the river of Lego City. Chemicals in the water turning the friggin' frogs gay. <laughs> but above all, the primary concern that everyone has on their mind. Climate change! <laughs> Which, of course, brings us to Lil Dicky's Earth. Yeah, apparently Lil Dicky decided to dip his toes into environmentalism by writing a song about cleaning up the Earth and addressing the climate change crisis. There is only one problem. This is meant to have a serious message. But it's a Lil Dicky song. A guy whose main shtick is gratuitous genitalia references, needless celebrity cameos, and vulgar language. I mean, yeah, it's possible to be funny and serious regarding climate change, but is that possible for Lil Dicky? Well, it's time to suffer together. This is Lil Dicky's Earth. I have a small dick! I have a small dick! The music video starts with reports of the California wildfires, all while trash is littered everywhere. And a group of kids knock over a trash can that gets the attention of Lil Dicky. Hey, are you Lil Dicky? Yeah. Oh. Hello. Yo, Lil Dicky, my brother thinks you suck. Your brother must be an individual of high intellect. Okay, your brother probably sucks. Look at how you turned out. You're a rat. I mean, I know they knocked a trash can over and everything, but arguing with kids is a new low, even for you. Well, anyway, as he continues bickering with the kids, one of them stays behind and discovers a magical book. The pages lead him to, uh, well, the only positive I can give for this. First of all, this is a terrific presentation. Terrific. Yeah, as much as I hate this video and the song, I have to admit the best part about it is the animation. I mean, look at it. The colors, the lighting, the textures, and for a music video, it's astounding. But how is it this good? Well, as it turns out, the video was co-directed by Nigel Tierney of Riot, Federico Heller of 3D AR, as well as Oddbot Animation and Iconic Engine. And yeah, they did their job well. I mean, the scenery looks stunning, the art direction is just right. Hell, even Lil Dicky in animated form looks great. Also, as someone who has a pair of uh, hairy skull crushers himself. <laughs> I appreciate the details here, alright? I feel represented. That shit's important in Hollywood. But that's probably not why you're here. Remember what I said about Lil Dicky being obsessed with gathering celebrities together? Well, the same applies here and he assembled a roster of A-list talent. You thought Avengers Endgame was the most ambitious crossover of 2019? Please, that's like nothing compared to this. Lil Dicky Nick Furyed the hell out of this song. He managed to get Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Halsey, Wiz Khalifa, Adam Levine, Shawn Mendes, even Miley Cyrus. And trust me, that's not the full list of everyone involved. But you wanted more? But there is one question to be answered. Now that you have all of these celebrities, what exactly do you do with them? Well, Lil Dicky decided, in his divine wisdom I'm sure, to have all the stars be different animals on God's green earth. Though not just any kind of animal, they are cute animals who say vulgar gross things. All to fight climate change? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't know the exact thought process behind this, but hey, I'm a Sagittarius. I'm stupidly optimistic. Hell, considering the estimated budget for this was $4 million, I doubt Lil Dicky would want to be lazy here, especially if it's in the name of saving the planet. So let's see what he throws at us first. Hi, I'm a baboon. I'm like a man, just less advanced, and my anus is huge. Um, okay. That's the joke you open with? I mean, I guess hearing a teen heartthrob say the word anus is hilarious in its own way. I don't know. 
Maybe I'm desensitized because this isn't the grossest thing I've seen Bieber do. Who knows? Continue. Hey, I'm a zebra. No one knows what I do, but I look pretty cool in my white or black. So is this a slam at Ariana for the whole cultural appropriation thing? I'd say yes, but I don't know if Lil Dicky has the balls to throw shade at one of his colleagues like this. I'm a lion cub, and I'm always getting licked. Again, I'm failing to see the joke. Is the line itself meant to be funny? Or is it because we went from the zebra being alive to being mauled and then a lion cub covered in blood? I mean, if the zebra yelled g Easy before being killed, I guess I could see how it would be funny. If you say g Easy one more fucking time, I'll kick you outside of this oh. By the way, Halsey, I doubt you will see this, but if you do, please don't be mad. What you did was amazing and, not gonna lie, kind of hilarious. And I feel bad for saying this, but I would pay good money to see another verbal fight between you and that guy. It would be better than pay-per-view. All right, now I got a lot of money riding on you, so drag him, sister! Uh, if you say g Easy one more fucking time, I'll kick you outside of this place. Oh, I just oh. twist it! Oh my god, dude, this is an MMA fight, dude. Twist that dick! Twist this dude! Twist this dick! Oh my god. Anyways, what's next? How's it going, I'm a cow? You drink milk from a tits? Ooh. Um, Lil Dicky? I don't know where you got your biology lessons, but male cows don't have udders. Like, is that supposed to be the joke? The fact that it's a male voice coming out of an anatomically female animal? Well, to be fair, it's not like males voicing female characters haven't been done before. Maybe Lil Dicky just couldn't find a female artist who was willing to say that line? I'm a fat fucking pig! Haha, -ha, the pig said fuck? Okay. I'm a common fungus. Really? This line isn't even that raunchy. So far, only three of these animals have said anything remotely not cute or gross. The rest, strangely the women, have said nothing close to what the others are saying. I'm sorry, but when you have Apple Music describe this song as a very vulgar, star-studded tribute to Earth and all its creatures, you pardon me for expecting a little more consistency in its premise. Also, maybe I'm having a case of selective amnesia because I gotta say, That's a lovely, lovely voice. Who is this common fungus? Oh. Oh god. Oh god, no. I... I remember now. And no! Okay, fine, I didn't actually forget, but I kind of wish I did. In fact, this was the moment I realized one of the major gripes I have with this song. It takes a lot of super talented people, people who have been funny elsewhere, and instead gives them nothing of worth. I'm sure Justin Bieber has made people laugh occasionally, and I know for a fact that Ariana has made children laugh during her Nickelodeon days. And of course, Haley Steinfeld, who, like I said in my Bumblebee video, is not only a very talented singer and songwriter, but also an immensely skilled actress. She's an actress who could betray any type of role that is given to her. And yes, she can be hilarious when she has to be. Life is an endless sea of pain. Emily, what is wrong? I got my period. Hell, even when she's just being herself, she's a riot. Oh my god, there's two white. Oh my god, of course, the one in the field. And then, top hat! Duh! Where do you see yourself in five years? I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. So, now that you're reminded of her talents, imagine reducing her down to saying this. I'm a common fungus. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it was just so quiet. So yeah, shame on you, Lil Dicky, for wasting this girl's talent. By the way, Haley, did you release your spores into the air or did you give me COVID-19? Because either way, you've taken my breath away. <laughs> uh, okay, but seriously though, Haley, uh, which is it? Anyways, what's next? Another lame joke? I'm a disgruntled skunk, shoot you out my butt hole. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! To be fair, I do think it's clever that Snoop Dogg is literally marijuana. I mean, what else should he be? But then we get a cameo that, still to this day, is just confusing. 
And I'm Kanye West. We love you. Um, thank you for reminding me that Kanye West is a thing, I guess. Yeah, if you couldn't tell already, this isn't actually Kanye. It is, in fact, comedian Kevin Hart, who really needs to work more on his celebrity impressions. Well, as it turns out, this part was meant to be for Kanye, and Lil Dicky tried to get a hold of him, but just couldn't. Apparently, he's an adamant guy to get in contact with for some reason. And while well, the main reason he's even in this is because Lil Dicky just admires Kanye and considers him a big hero of his. But even with that, what exactly does he have to do with the earth or environmentalism? I mean, is this what it takes to make people laugh? Just stating who you are or anything random? Now you're probably thinking, oh, Brendan, stop it. I think you missed the point. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the silly jokes. First off, according to the song, we're going to die. I don't have time to relax. Second, what jokes? Do you mean these? We're just some rhinos, funny as heck. I'm just a cherub once with this snack. That's the joke. Hippity hop, I'm a kangaroo. How about there, up and down with you? Okay, please. People who like this song, how exactly is Sia saying that she's a kangaroo who loves to hop around in any way, shape, or form funny? It isn't. Well, I guess it's good to know that Sia can still sound like an angel while singing stupid lyrics. There is also another aspect that I don't understand. Why have the animals be vulgar if this is about saving the planet? Doesn't having them speak unappealing things kind of defeat the purpose of getting people to protect the animal kingdom? Because, yeah, I know I want to get in touch with Mother Nature after knowing that baboons have large anuses, skunks can shoot you from the rear, and vultures feed on dead animals. In all fairness, it's not impossible to talk about the grotesque side of animals as well as their beauty. Z Frank 1 does this all the time. One of the male's arms is actually a hectocotylus, which functions like a penis. Therefore, shaking hands with a male octopus is sort of like playing Russian roulette. In the, oh my god, it looks, it looks like a dog penis that's trying to escape. <laughs> run, little red rocket, run. Well, that's even worse. No, I'm saying it looks like it's relieving stress, like it was cramming for a math test and needed a break. However, if you're going to aim for gross, why not go full force and show us some disgusting animals? Or better yet, avoid that angle. Because I think this song could have been better if they just ditched that comedy aspect and tried to educate us on these creatures. Take for instance, my favorite animal of them all, the elephant. You know, ever since I was little, I had always been fascinated by these creatures, and after learning more about them, I had every reason to be interested in them. You've probably heard the saying that elephants never forget, and yeah, that's true. They do have a fantastic memory, yet this is just one aspect about them that makes them one of the most social, creative, and even benevolent animals out there. Despite not being close relatives, evolution has made the elephant's brain remarkably close to that of a human. They have as many neurons and synapses, as well as a highly developed cerebral cortex and hippocampus. It's because of this intelligence that they've been able to grasp basic math, art, and even music. Perhaps their most fascinating feature is their capacity for empathy, altruism, and even justice. Such as when they mourn the dead of one of their own, or when they show concern for injured humans. And even when an attack on humans does occur, it's usually because of massive poaching occur nearby, suggesting that it's an act of revenge. They're even one of the few animals to admire themselves in a mirror. Sadly though, their numbers have been dwindling with as much as 415,000 African elephants left in the wild, around 90% of their population has been wiped out within the last century. Asian elephants aren't much better either. With around 40 to 50,000 left in the wild, their numbers have dropped about 50% in the past three generations. And I know this is gonna sound weird coming from someone like me, but I think we should be doing everything we can to protect them. These are beautiful, magnificent creatures that I'm hoping don't go away for good. But let's see what Lil Dicky has to say about them. I'm an elephant, I got junk in my trunk. Oh yeah, people. That is all he says regarding the elephant. You have got to be kidding me. I mean, 
Jeez, Lil Dicky, do you realize how much better your message would have worked if you focused on informing the audience rather than doing your failed stand-up? It's not like liberals are the only ones wanting to protect them. Even James Woods, one of the most outspoken Republicans in Hollywood, expressed his outrage on Twitter when the Trump administration made it legal to bring elephant parts into the US as trophies. Granted, yes. You could say the only reason he cared was because the elephant is the symbol of the Republican Party, but I beg to differ. I like to think that their ability to show empathy and intelligence can bring anyone together, no matter their political affiliation. And yes, I know the main focus of the song is on the comedy, which sucks, but I wished this was the moment Lil Dicky took his message seriously and focused on giving us a reason to care for these animals. But let me guess, it's supposed to be funny because she's talking about how she's got junk in the trunk and it's being sung by someone who's been made fun of for having none of that. And elephants have trunks, so it works on multiple levels. Yeah, I hate to break it to you, but irony doesn't automatically equal funny. Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck it. Fucking. And trust me, the next bunch of jokes don't make up for what I'm feeling right now. This isn't funny! I'm a squirrel looking for my next nut. <laughs> Get it? Cuz balls. <laughs> what? Was there another clip you were expecting? Dude, I think you're going crazy. Let's move on. And I'm a pony, just a free course. Oh, come on. You couldn't even get that joke right. Katy Perry is a dark horse, not a freak horse. Ugh. Please, don't tell me you backed out of making the joke because you thought it would have been a form of digital blackface. Not saying that's the case, but if it is, I think you need to stop reading Teen Vogue. And wouldn't you know it, this brings yet another issue that I have, and it's kind of a big one. That being, the celebrity cameos are pointless. Yeah, I feel weird giving credit to his other work, but at least when he had celebrity guests before, they made sense within the context of the song. In Professional Rapper, he goes to Snoop Dogg to get advice on becoming a rapper. Pretty simple. Freaky Friday is about him switching bodies with Chris Brown, so of course Chris Brown is in it. Not too complicated. And in Save That Money, he wants to look professional by having Fetty Wap and Rich Homie Quan in it, but he's shooting the video on a budget and doesn't have enough money to pay the rappers for a full verse. Okay. Okay, clever scenario there. Here, they don't matter. These animals could have been sung by anyone and it wouldn't have made a difference. Nor is there an explanation as to why these artists are the animals that they voice. Like, okay, according to the Wikipedia page, the animals are meant to, on several occasions, be intended as a reference to an incident in their career. But the link attached just leads to an article stating why Kanye wasn't in it. Yay, helpful. In all fairness, we can see the connection with Snoop as a marijuana plant, and I could potentially see a few links with some of the others, but they could be a stretch at best. Why bother connecting some of the animals to the celebrities if you're not going to go all the way with the joke? Like, why have Bieber as a baboon? Why is Adam Levine a vulture? What exact connection does Brendan Urie have with a fat pig? Cause, like, I don't, I don't see the correlation. I would say that an explanation is needed for all of them, but you'd be breaking one of the most significant rules of comedy. That being, you're explaining the joke. And as we all know, If you have to explain a joke, there is no joke! But even if you needed to explain the reasoning behind them, I think if you planned on referencing a career moment for the celebrities in all of the animals, it actually could have been a lot more amusing, or at least clever. Like, why not reference one of their songs, or pick a different artist who would be a better fit for the lines you wrote? Katy Perry as the lion would have made sense, given that one of her songs is titled Roar, which has a jungle or big cat themed music video. You had Wiz Khalifa as a black and white animal, but it probably would have made more sense to make him a black and yellow animal. Haley Steinfeld would have made sense as a butterfly, given this line from Starving. Don't need no butterflies when you give me the whole damn zoo. Hell, I'm pretty sure she's referenced butterflies at least twice in Dickinson. And this here is Sir Tybalt Butterfly. Oh no, they don't even have the big news. What big news? The caterpillar in my garden turned into a butterfly. 
And hey, if you really wanted to, you could have her start off as a caterpillar and then by the end, she's transformed into a butterfly. Also, this would work in referencing starving, seeing as how despite being herbivores, caterpillars are major gluttons. Many of them will consume a thousand times their weight in as little as two months. That's what we like to call a very starving caterpillar. Also, if you wanted to, you could have Haley be the caterpillar that Nadine accidentally killed. I accidentally suffocated him two hours later in my pencil box. This would be an alternate take on events, of course. In terms of switching out the artist with another, it would make just as much, if not more, sense to have Adam Levine be the wolf instead of Rita Ora. I mean, come on, if animals proved anything, it's that he could do a pretty decent howl. Oh, baby, I'm playing on you and really? You managed to get one of the most hyped up and energetic personalities in the music business and turn him into a clam? I'm sorry, but clams are stupid. I'm sorry I said it, but they are dumb as hell. Not to mention you had John Legend only be a backup singer? What a wasted opportunity. You could have had to be an aardvark. The memes were right there waiting for you. Also, maybe instead of Zac Brown, it might have made more sense to have someone like Nicki Minaj doing the vocals for the cow. She's at least one female artist I could think of who might be more comfortable delivering that line about titty milk. I mean, Lord knows how many times she's referred to her. Humongous hunga longa no no logongas. And not to bring up Haley again, but if we're going to count irony as humor, wouldn't it have made more sense to have her be the squirrel, given that in real life she has an allergy to nuts? Okay, so... Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I'm actually allergic to nuts. So these are normally, these normally have nuts in it or caramel. So I always like cut it in half and make sure because I always hope for the caramel. Wouldn't it be horrible if she cut into it, Steve? Because wouldn't it be horrible if Haley Steinfeld died of an allergic reaction to nuts here at Star Party? Though in all fairness, I can understand why she wasn't the squirrel because what kind of nuts she was not specific on. Ah, you thought I wasn't going to use that clip. <laughs> I told you guys before, I'm not above resurrecting a dead meme. But yeah, I think with a bit more thought and effort put into the references and the use of celebrities, this could have had the potential to be a fun song. Unfortunately, we don't have that. Everyone just feels wasted and having them be animals doesn't work either because in the end, I'm not learning anything about them. However, I really shouldn't get in that much of a twist about this. And hell, at least the majority of these are beautiful and even essential creatures to this planet that I could see any non-environmentalist wanting to protect. Uh, HPV. Wait a minute, didn't they say this was a part one? Huh, yeah, I guess so. So yeah, no, just, just come back for part two. You're a